Hi, it's Steffi from Steffi's Beads and Bobbles, and I have this fun little uh, St. Patrick's Day project to do for you. Now, this one has a little blip in it, but there's things you could do to hide that. You could put another shamrock or a rhinestone, or and they even have a sparkly one you could put over that. We'll look at that later, but I just wanted to show you how to make it. This was my first one, so I made a little mistake. But the materials you're going to need are these. Um, Card stock in the color you want, which I wait until it's half price and I get it for two fifty for a hundred. And this is the four and a half by six and a half sheets. They're nice size, kind of like the big giant index card is basically what they are in colors. And I got the black one. I've got I bought this one and then I bought a multicolored one which came with all the greens. And I had this color green and the light green. So you're gonna need that. Then you're going to need some kind of sheet music, which I have this old, I've got a bunch of old hymnals I've picked up, and this one's broken. I didn't feel the least bit guilty cutting this apart because it was missing the front of the book. There was no front of the book, just this one cover page, and no title page, none of, just this. There's no, no anything, and then just half the pages were missing, there's rip pages, so I've got like 200 plus pages of music I can use. It was previously taped. It was a beat up mess. And you can find these usually for 3 to $5. And you get a lot of paper for the money. I think I paid 3 for this one. So you need a sheet of the music, which you just pull out of the book. And then pick the area that you want to use. And then you're going to need some kind of either cookie cutter or um, a stencil or something that you've traced and cut out of. You could use that same cardstock to, to draw a shamrock and cut it out. I find the cookie cutter is easiest for me. And you can stamp it like you do the ornaments, but I prefer to trace around it. So what I do is I take the piece, I put it on the paper, trying to conserve, and I take a very sharp pencil and the way I do it is I go I press down very hard and I go in with the pencil you want it right along the edge you don't want to have the pencil like this because if you do that it pushes the tip out you want to push the tip into the actual uh, cookie cutter if you're using a stencil or a piece of paper that you're tracing or a cardboard that you're tracing around same thing, just the, the cardboard go right along the edge. Except you're probably going to be able to go straight because you won't have a tall top. And then you're just going to trace it out. So you're going to trace it out and you're going to do the same thing on the music. And you'll end up with these. You'll have the piece here, or in this case, this one that I just did. I don't know if it shows up. Yeah, it does. And then you'll have your music. So when you're done, you'll have two. I've cut out four for you. So, once you do that, you're going to take your piece and you're going to take Mod Podge or whatever glue you want to use. I like Mod Podge. Um, and I'm going to take this and I always keep a little dish of water and a paper towel, which I can't show you. They're off camera. Let me see if I can show you. I keep a little dish of water and a paper towel on a paper plate so that when I want to rinse this off, I can or at least soak it to keep the glue from drying on it. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put Mod Podge on this back piece because I want to stick the paper onto the front of this. And the cool thing about this design is because the stem goes at an angle, there's no mistaking how the other piece goes onto here. And I am getting it on the wax paper and that is going to get on the back of the piece but you can fix that later. I'm not really concerned with the back, but if you are, there's a way to fix it. Then I'll set that in the water so it doesn't get damaged. Um, it's an old paintbrush, but I, well, I'll just have to rinse it and there we go. Okay, so now once I do that, I'm going to take the piece of music. Now you got to be real careful because on the first one I did, there is a ripple. Oh my goodness, this, the glue sticks. A uh, ripple where the music did not lay right and I didn't catch it right away. So, you're going to want to be real careful when you do this. Okay, it's trying to stick to the... Okay, you're going to want to line up 
you want to line up the edges really carefully. Now, if you make a mistake and it's a little off, you can fix it because we'll be putting the pipe cleaner over it. But once you get that on there, you're going to smooth it down really carefully. And then if you miss any spots, you can go back and dab a little bit more of the Mod Podge in there. And I'll just take a little bit on the tip of my... And you can actually pour some Mod Podge into a little container. And that sometimes works out really well. So, see, it's not perfect, but it's okay because the pipe cleaner will lay on there and then you can always trim the back too. Um, but it's, it's going to be fine. I'm not worried about it because the pipe cleaner will go over any edges I mistaked, made mistakes on. And now what I'm going to do for this one, I'm going to show you two different ways. In this one, I'm going to put a little bit more Mod Podge on it. And I'm actually going to borrow this plate I made up here because this is going to be messy. And I'm going to take a Mod Podge it again. And then I'm going to pick a glitter that I like. And I have this little tiny bottle of really fine glitter that I'm going to... I mean, it's not the finest you can buy, but it's fairly fine. And I'm just going to sprinkle that onto the piece. Just however much you want. You can put a real thick coat or just a little bit whatever your taste is you don't have to do too close to the edge because you're going to have the pipe cleaner on the edge if you choose to put the pipe cleaner you can do really anything you want but I like that the color so once you do that you gotta let that dry so I made sure that I made up a couple for you and here's the one I made up now I used a really fine glitter on this one. Oh yeah this is the one I was thinking of I use this one on here so kind of went heavy-handed but it's okay now that's all dry and ready to finish so we'll do that in a minute I want to show you the other way I did it now if you look carefully at this one it's got green over it what I did was what did I do with it oh here it is I took a piece of tissue paper and just tore a piece off big enough to cover it and then I took, I'll take the other one, and we'll make that one real quick. And we'll do the same thing we did the first time, and that way you have a way of seeing it a second time. And we're just going to put the stuff onto the cardstock. You can lay it down flat or hold it in your hand, whatever works for you. you got to hold on to it, so you're going to have a little bit with no glue on it, because you got to have a spot to hold on to. This is why I keep baby wipes in my studio, because you're going to make a mess on your hand. Then, I'm going to put this on there like we did the last time. Okay, like that. But instead of putting the glitter on, now I'm going to double check, make sure everything's stuck. I think even that end is. Then I'm going to take and put more Mod Podge on here. But we're not going to put glitter. Not yet. And maybe not at all. It depends on your taste. Then what I'm going to do, make sure it's on there really good. Well, that one did have a little spot that needed to be cut, touched up. Okay. Then I'm going to take a piece of tissue paper and go over it with the tissue paper. Like that. And make sure it's stuck well. You can see there's a little bit right there that did not stick. So I'm going to touch that up and then make sure it's stuck all the way and you're just going to let that dry and once it's dried you can cut it out now let me get a baby wipe <laughs> I have them right here I thought well we'll just use the water and the paper towel that's the other reason why the water can help out and I've got paper towels right here so always keep paper towels water baby wipes around Okay, now, I have the finished one right there. And I did put glitter on it. Once it was dry, I, I went over the tissue paper one more time, and I put glitter. So, because I wanted to be able to show you, because this is, you know, you have to let it all dry. Basically, you do all this, let it dry for a day, because you cannot put the pipe cleaner on until this is dry. Then once you're done, you're going to get your glue gun out. Now, 
you take whichever one you want to work with, whichever way you've done it. Now see this back, you can cover that up. Anywhere I did not have that, that the glue touched, it did that. See, this one looks like that. But this one, I went over the entire back with the Mod Podge, and it makes brush strokes, but it kind of hides that. If you care, you can cover that. You can also cover it with the tissue paper. I did that on this one. I covered the back with tissue paper ahead of time. I did it on both sides. So you can do that as well if that bothers you. If it doesn't bother you and you don't care, you're just going to wear it as a, a little brooch or make it a little ornament and you don't care, then, and if you notice, I'll show you that in a minute. So you're going to take this and you got to get, I use the glittery pipe cleaners, but you could use regular green pipe cleaners. And what I decided to do, because it was too hard to make it in one fell swoop, I just took and I made a piece at a time. And I bent it around this little end here and I snipped it like that and then I took the glue gun which I'll have to move over under here and I put glue around that little edge and then I put this on there like that and this is the glue the, the gorilla glue gun with gorilla glue I recently got a Gorilla Glue Gun, but you can see how you can hide any imperfections with got a long piece of glitter on there. There. Hide any perfections with that. Then what I did is I would take the next section and I would bend it around as best I could. You'll, you'll fix it better once you put it on. And then you're going to bend it around, get it to that spot, and again, snip it. And then you're going to do the same thing. And you're going to, you're going to put the glue. I do a pretty good bead of glue around there. And then I'm going to take the pipe cleaner and put it around the edge. You just got to, got to hold it on there. For a couple minutes that one didn't doesn't look as good but I'm also doing it on camera and when you have the time to to take your time it does help when you're on camera you're trying to hurry a little bit but then you're gonna go around the next one and you want to do it as you go because each one of these little hearts that form the clover are slightly different so if you cut them out ahead of time you have to figure out now which one is which and I tried that the first time and it was a pain so I found it's much easier if you cut them out as you go you go back around I usually do two two beads um, and then you're gonna start laying down your pipe cleaner or Chanel strip whatever you call it this is a glitter one but like I said you could use the regular ones too and those would be cute the fuzzy ones I just happen to like the glitter now you are going to make a mess on the back a little bit. And like I said, that if that bothers you, it's you can definitely fix it. I'm not going to address that on here because it's just literally brushing more uh, Mod Podge on the back. And if you want to add a piece of tissue paper on the back, you can. Or you can um, just leave it with the Mod Podge and cut it. All right, and then you glue glue it on. Again, oops, there's a piece of felt that came from, I don't know where. That's funny. Okay, where did, oh, there it is. Okay, and then we're gonna kind of bend that around. And see, like I said, if you're doing this yourself, it's going to be, uh, taking your time, it's going to look a lot better. This is me hurrying so that I don't make this video two hours long. Um, you know, when you can see the difference in the ones I took my time. But I, I've just, got, I can't, uh, hold on, we have a little more glue on there. It's just hard to do this and take your time on camera because it would take me much longer than you want to spend watching it. 
but you get the idea. Just take your time, form it properly. It doesn't look bad, but I mean, I'm a bit of a perfectionist and I would have taken more time to make sure. Now, once you get it done to that point, now you get to decide what you want to do on the back. Now, if you decide you want to make the back look better, then what you can do is at that point, you can go ahead and do the more Mod Podge on the back or you can glue another piece of tissue paper on the back like that or even a piece of felt whatever you want to do on the back and then um, probably the tissue paper would look the best I think that looks really nice that doesn't look that look doesn't look that bad but you can see the bits um, and then you're going to decide if it's going to be a pin back or if you're going to cut a piece of ribbon and we'll do uh, one of each So I have pin backs over here, and you got to decide what size you want to do. If you want to do little bitty ones, but being that these are a pretty wide um, pin, I would say the wider ones would probably the the three hole would probably be the better ones to use. Gold or silver, it really doesn't matter. And basically, you're just going to take the back, and you're just going to once you've decided what you're going to do on the back. Or nothing you can just take and put a bead of the glue and then you're going to lay the pin back onto that little bead of glue get it centered in the way you want it to look and then I always take and put a drop on there and blend it across those holes whenever I do a pin back with glue which I don't do often and that will make you a pin you can pin it on your shirt your jacket your purse whatever you want to do. Now I've got another one. Oh, I guess, yeah, I don't, yeah, I didn't finish the other one, but we're going to show you how to do the back. And basically what I did was I took a piece of ribbon. I should have made up a second one ahead of time, but you're going to take a piece of ribbon the length that you want, and probably that's a little long. And you can do dark green, light green, whatever, whatever you want. You can do gold cord, whatever, and you just cut it to the length you want. And then what I did is I put a drop of glue, put the first side down, then I put another drop of glue and put the other side down, and then to hide it, I had these little charms that I got from Hobby Lobby, the little flatbacks, when they were half price for $1.50, and I got two or three, no, I think I got them on clearance, so I actually paid very little. I think I paid 90% off. I bought a bunch of these, and you just glue a little flatback on there, and it hides the, the, the part but you could also do that if you make a boo-boo like I did here. You could put one of those even on the front like that if you wanted to. Or a jewel, a rhinestone, a button, pretty much anything or even a bow um, if that bothered you. But anyway, it's just a very simple project with very simple supplies. Basically music or a printout of music. Card stock in the color you want for the back. Ribbon or pin back pipe cleaners in whatever style you like, whether you like the metallic or the fluffy ones, a good glue gun with glue sticks, and some Mod Podge or whatever you want to use. This was a shiny super gloss Mod Podge. You could do the, uh, the matte one, you could do the regular gloss, or you could do triple thick or any of the kinds that you like. There's really, I just happen to have a bunch of Mod Podge and that's what I chose to use. So, um, and then I did put a little glitter on top of that uh, tissue paper as well. You can also use tissue paper that has glitter in it, but this was a very used piece, so I didn't want to do that. You can see how easy they are. They're a lot of fun and so simple, and most people have a lot of these crafting supplies. If you're an artist that loves to use paper, you probably have cardstock. You probably have some music. You might have pipe cleaners, but shoot, if you don't, they're a couple bucks at Hobby Lobby. They don't cost hardly anything. I think a, a small pack of the metallic ones is a couple bucks. So, and then most of us have some kind of glitter. And you don't have to use green. You could use silver or gold. But again, cheap, easy to find. Um, these are all supplies that once you buy them, you have them for many projects. If you buy a book of music, that's hundreds of projects because each sheet is two pieces. 
If you buy pipe cleaners, again, tons of projects. If you buy glitter, tons of projects and ribbon. It's just a great way to use up stuff you already have. And if you do have to buy some of these items, you can use them for many other projects. Because, of course, green can be used for Christmas projects and everything. So, I hope you enjoyed this. Just a little fun project for St. Patrick's Day. Um, I just thought it would be fun to uh, make this cute little project. Um, I hope you enjoyed it. And, uh, and there's the back again with the tissue paper. So, you can see that it's a nice finish. It does finish it off really nice. So, that is an option. And then, that's if you brush the Mod Podge on the back. It does leave brush marks. Um, but, you know, whatever, you're, whatever you want to accomplish with it. So I hope you enjoyed it. I thank you very much, and I'll be back soon. Bye.